Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. So you have an old analog meter and you're wondering what use it is. Now, before you dismiss the idea of using an old analog panel meter, do an internet search for analog panel meters and you will be surprised. There are thousands of them out there ready to buy brand new off the shelf. There are also thousands that you can buy that have been salvaged from old equipment and that are still very functional. And besides, they're kind of cool. The scale on the meter face can be deceiving as its original application could have included any number of external components that made the meter scale work. But the meter itself could be something quite different. This could be true even if the scale is volts. So how do we figure out what these things are so that we can possibly use them in a project? And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now the procedure I'm going to be presenting here is the one that I was taught as part of my precision measurement equipment specialist training in the Air Force. It is intended for current meters as opposed to voltmeters, which require a different sort of procedure. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. I make a concerted effort to respond to every comment. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. So, let's get to it. First of all, you need to gather some equipment together to do this. You will need a power supply, something that you can vary the voltage on is really, really helpful. And then you're going to also need a couple of variable resistors. You can have a decade box that you use. Be careful with decade boxes. They are not high current devices. Uh, you could use some potentiometers, uh, various uh, trimmer resistors, whatever will be able to handle the potential current that you might see in this procedure. Now as we go through this procedure you might have to choose different resistors or change the voltage on the power supply to accomplish the task. There are so many different types of meter movements out there. There is no way to provide a one-size-fits-all procedure for every movement. Now, if you're not familiar with how to accurately read an analog meter, see this video here. There is a link up there in the corner. Now, is that meter that you have in your hand a current meter or is it a voltage meter? Remember, it could have been a salvage meter out of a voltmeter, but the circuitry around the meter itself took that ammeter and turned it into a voltmeter. The scale is in volts, but it's still just an ammeter. And once you are sure that you have an ammeter in hand, we have to determine two basic things about it. We need to find its internal resistance and its full scale current. Now, before we do anything, we have to zero that meter first. You notice that there's nothing connected to the back of this meter. So that needle should be sitting there right on that zero. Now most meters have a little screwdriver adjustment right here. You can kind of see it. That allows you to zero the meter. Some meters on the other hand have no such adjustment available on the outside of the meter you actually have to take the meter face off to get at the zeroing and you can kind of see the mechanism back in there and then go through this same process but be careful when you take the meter face off you don't want to damage the meter in the process so what we do to zero this is we first of all have to determine which direction to turn the, the little screwdriver thing and we can see if we turn it to the left, down, come on, there we go, we can see it's starting to go down. Now, remember, these meter movements have frictional resistance as part of the meter movement. 
And so when you do this zeroing, you say, that looks great. Tap on the front to kind of break things loose and then very carefully look to make sure that the needle is dead center on the zero. That looks pretty good. But there you go. We have zeroed this meter. The first step in our process is to measure the internal resistance of the meter. You may ask, well, why can't I just connect my DVM across the meter and measure the resistance directly? To measure resistance, your DVM either uses a known current that it passes through the resistor and then measures the voltage across it to determine the resistance, or it applies a known voltage across the resistor and measures the current through it to determine the resistance. In either case, the resulting current could easily be more than the full-scale capabilities of your analog meter and you could do damage to it by pegging the meter. Here's an example of exactly what I'm talking about. So here's a case in point. I have here this meter. It has a 50 microamp range on it. And I have my DVM set here to ohms. I connected my DVM to my other DVM, which is measuring current. And notice what current we have here, 99.7 microamps. Well, that is nearly twice the full-scale reading of this. Not a good thing to be doing. And this is why you have to get this indirectly, as I will show you. So the first part of what we have to do is we have to establish a full-scale deflection on the meter. First, we take our variable resistor. I'm using a potentiometer here. And we turn it all the way up so that it's on its maximum value. Then we also go up here and we turn our power supply voltage all the way down. Next, we need to connect everything up. We take the positive side of the power supply down through one side of the resistor. We take the other side of the resistor around to the positive side of our ammeter. And then we have the negative side of our ammeter going all the way up to the negative side on the power supply. Now while watching the meter, turn on the power supply. And the object is to initially get something less than a full scale reading on the meter. We want to change the series resistance value as needed to achieve this. Now if this is a variable voltage power supply, slowly increase the power supply output voltage to a convenient value, kind of watching for about a half scale reading through your resistor. There you go. Now, with us having achieved about a half scale reading, we're now going to turn our series resistance down while at the same time watching our meter. The object is to get a full scale reading on the meter. So as I turn this up, We're looking for that full scale. This is a little scratchy for a potentiometer. Now we're pretty close. It looks pretty good. But remember, we need to tap on the meter to make sure that it is good. Now that is a nice full scale reading on the meter. Using our DVM, we want to measure the applied voltage and note this value, 2.489 volts. And we do this by connecting to the positive side that's connected here and the negative side that is connected back here. Next, we're going to connect a parallel resistor across the meter. Be sure that you've turned it all the way up here we have this decade box with the 
100K turned all the way up to 9, so it's 900K. And when you first connect that up, you probably shouldn't see much or any deflection on the meter at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be decreasing the resistance with my decade box. Down, down, you can't see any change right now yet. I'm down to 100K, turn the 10K all the way up, turn the 100K down, turn the 10K down one step at a time while watching the meter. I'm to 10K, turn the 1K all the way up, turn the 100 ohm down one click at a time. Now we're starting to see a little deflection. I'm down to 100 ohms. I'm going to turn my 10 ohm all the way up, my 100 ohm to zero. I'm going to continue decreasing. The object is to get the needle to go to the 50% point. I am now down to 10 ohms. So now I'm going to turn my times 1 all the way up, my times 10 all the way down. And I'm going to decrease this. Again, my object is to get half scale or as close to half scale as it can get. I'm tapping on the meter to, to help the process. Remember, there's friction in them, our meters. So, 4 ohms is too little. 5 ohms is about as close as I'm going to get to that. So now, the value of this parallel resistor is the internal resistance of the meter. And you ask, well, why is that? That is because when the, the parallel resistor is the same value as the internal resistance of the meter, then half the current is going through the parallel and half the current is going through the meter. Now we can know the internal resistance of the meter and the full scale current of the meter. To begin with, we have to come in here and turn off our power supply. I'm going to turn that all the way down and turn off the power supply. We don't want any current applied. I'm going to actually disconnect this. I am going to disconnect my parallel resistor at the meter end because I want to be able to measure the resistance through all these wires, the connection resistance that might be here, as well as the decade box. And then we disconnect our, our other clip lead here. We're going to be measuring the resistance of the series resistor from here to here. And we're going to be measuring the resistance of our parallel resistor from here to here. The first step whenever measuring resistance, especially lower values of resistance, is to short the leads of your meter together at the end where you're going to be measuring the resistance. And then note the value that is on your screen. In this case, it's 0.2 ohms. Now we're going to measure the resistance of our series resistor back here through the very cables that was used to connect it into the circuit. And so we're connected here and here. And we have 254.1 ohms. Next, we measure the parallel resistance, again, at the exact place where they were connected to our meter. So we're connected to the end here, and we measure 5.3 ohms. And so now we're ready to do the calculations to find the internal resistance and the full scale current of this ammeter. What do we know? We, have, we, we know that the offset when we connected the two meter leads together to measure resistance was 0.2 ohms. And then we measured the series resistor here as 254.1 ohms. And the, the resistor that we put in parallel, what we're going to call the internal resistance of the meter, as 5.3 ohms. But these two meter readings have this offset to them. 
So the, the real series resistance is going to be equal to this resistance, 254.1, minus this offset, which gives us 253.9 ohms. So that's the real re resistance here, 253.9 ohms is the real resistance there. We also have that same offset here. This was 5.3 ohms from here to here as measured with the 0.2 offset. So our in, the real deal is going to equal 5.3 minus 0.2, which gives us 5.1 ohms. So this guy right here is 5.1 ohms, which is the same as this guy in here. So here, right here, this is the internal resistance of your meter, this 5.1 ohms. All right, but what's the full scale current? Well, let's look at this, this circuit here. This is no longer there because we connected this after we established the full scale, so that's not there. We have a voltage of 2.489 volts, we measured that. We have a series resistor here of 253.9 ohms. We have the internal resistance of the meter, which represents another series resistor, 5.1 ohms, and then back to the voltage. So the total series resistance, if we were to take these together, combine them together into a single resistor, would be 253.9 ohms plus 5.1 ohms, which gives us 259 ohms. Okay, so we know that the total of this is 200 and 59 ohms. So how much current is running through this, this loop here? Well, we have 259 ohms, and we have 2.489 volts, so current by Ohm's law is going to be this voltage, 2.489 volts. We're going to divide that by the resistance that's here, which is 200 and 59 ohms, and that gives us 9.61 milliamps. So, the full scale meter reading of that meter is 9.61 milliamps, and the internal resistance of that meter is 5.1 ohms. So at this point, you know the internal resistance and the full-scale current of the meter. This fully characterizes the meter movement from a DC perspective. With this information, you can set up some stuff to have this meter do special things. In the next two videos, I'm going to show you how to measure higher currents with a low current meter and how to measure voltage with a low current ammeter. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.